Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are lucky enough to be here for the... I always do this. What month is it? October. You'd think I'd know that. It's cold, and it's going to snow next weekend, and there's people dressing up like all sorts of things. You are lucky enough to be here for the October 2019 Tabs 3 Virtual User Group from Attorney Computer Systems, where today we are talking about viewing active users, something we find a lot of people have questions about, and the new Net Documents integration that will allow you to have tabs and when you create matters, have them instantly show up in Net Documents. So without any further ado, I am going to hit all the magic buttons that I need to <laughs> to get out of this thing and to get over to tabs so that Mary Jo can talk to us about viewing active users. Yes. So there are many times that you want to know who's in the software and what they're doing or where they're at, um, either because you want to do something that is exclusive to the program and maybe you want to see who's in and you want to you know, be able to tell those people to get out of the software so that you can do what you need to do. Uh, you may have uh, times when users are getting a message uh, that um, they have a duplicate user. and you want to go in and see what's going on with that. Who is the duplicate user? What program were they in? What were they doing? Uh, and you may need to reset that user. Um, so we'll look at how you can use the View Active User tool for that. Um, so there's just, uh, just times when you just want to see who's in the software. Uh, so we're going to go up to the View button up here on the screen. And if I click on that and go here to the Active User list, this will tell me active users that are currently logged into the program. Now right now I'm in tab 3, so I'm seeing the users that are logged into tab 3. If I want to see the other systems, Practice Master, Trust, APGL, whatever other systems that you have currently installed, you can click the little checkbox down here at the bottom for all systems, and that will show you all the users that are in all the different programs and what activity they're currently doing in that program. So the first thing that we're going to look at is we can see that the blank user is in several things. They're in GL, they're in Practice Master twice because they're in the client file and the contact file. We can see in tabs we have the blank user who's in just the menu, and we have Ron who is in on the menu as well. To be able to tell what the current user is, who's logged in, like me, I'm on this screen, which user is me, it has an asterisk in front of the, the user ID of the current login. So if I were in here and I needed to go do something with all these other users, I wouldn't um, want to reset myself or do something with myself with the asterisk because that's my current login. So that's how you can tell the current one. If Ron was in here five times in tabs, I'd be able to see that that was his current login for this session. So here's um, the detail view. So I'm seeing blank is in these programs. And this is a good example because blank is in two things. This doesn't mean that there are two users or two instances of blank using Practice Master. Because I can see the computer name that they're logged in on. It's the same computer. It's just different files. So if a user gets that duplicate user message that pops up, what we want to do is we want to change this to the summary up here because this will show us each instance that the user is in here and in what program. So I see that the blank user is one time in Practice Master doing multiple tasks because they have two different windows open in Practice Master, but only once. They're only logged into it once. They're logged into General Ledger. They're logged into Tabs. And then Ron is in Tabs. So this gives me a quick overview of the times that this user is in. Now if I were in the summary mode and I saw a blank user twice in Practice Master, that would be a red flag for me because I'm in the summary. I should only see them in Practice Master once. That, that, that means there's a duplicate out there. So if that happens, I would ask all users to log out of their program. And then once they're officially logged out, if I still see them on the screen, then I know that's the duplicate and I can reset that user. Now we're not really going to go talk about resetting users, but there is an option here to do that. Um, at the bottom, we don't just willy-nilly go, oh, somebody forgot to log out, we're going to reset them. Because files can get locked open and things can happen to the data, and we don't want to just crash them out of the system by resetting them. It's really when those instances happen where the power went out or their computer crashed or something happened that they got stuck in the system that we would go to reset them. So it's not something to just go do just because they forgot. It's really something that you want to be carefully considering before you reset. 
So this is a list here in the active user, and I just clicked on it. Now generally if I were to go in to do something that was exclusive, um, like customization, I will get a list, and I don't, I can't, I guess that's not something I have, but I don't have two people in in tabs, so I need to go into tabs and let me, uh, let me see if I can open it on mine as well. Give me one second, and we'll get two users of uh, Ron in there so that I can show you this. And I guess I had that open. Let me get to my, sorry, I've got to wait for my windows to close, to exit my full screen. All right, let me get into tabs, and let's get a second user of Ron into tabs. Since this is the tabs virtual user group and not Practice Master, we don't really want to go over there. So I'm going to log in as Ron as well. And I'm going to see how this is a duplicate user. So we have Ron. You're not seeing that because that's on your machine. Oh, 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 okay. So well, you go ahead. Let and me see. I'm just going to go ahead and go in then. No. Um, we're going to say no. I'm sorry. I thought you could see my screen. She's over on her desktop getting the second yeah. Ron in there so that we can see the second yeah. Ron. Yeah, okay. So now I'm going to go back to where you guys can see me. Sorry about that. And we will go into the view active users. And now I should have two instances of Ron in here. Um, and I do not. Did I not stay in there, Paul? Well, I thought this was going to be a cool demo, and now all of a sudden <laughs> it's just not working. Well, let's um, let's let's just so, jump over to yeah. Practice Master real quick. Yeah. Just to so I do have is. two in in Practice Master, but what I want to do is, if I were to go into something that was exclusive, like customization, all right. So we will pretend that we're in tabs here for a moment. Let's get these things closed up here. And if I were in customization in um, tabs, okay. Um, it would do the same thing. It would pop up, and when I get to here, you it's, did DFIC by mistake. Well, it doesn't matter. DFIC should still be exclusive, but it's not even getting there. We there. Go. there we go. So now I've got two users of blank in Practice Master, and I can see that I've got two different ones, and I would need to go then reset. So anytime you're doing an exclusive um, task in Tabs or Practice Master or any of the programs and you get this conflicting activities, you're immediately able to see who is logged in that's conflicting and how you can then get them out. So I know that blank user is in there twice. I can notify them if I have platinum. I can log them off if I have platinum safely. But if I don't, then I'd have to go and physically notify them that they need to get out of the software. But you don't want to reset them. Right. Just you because you're just, mad because they didn't get out when you told them to. That's correct. Resetting could cause all sorts of problems. That's correct. So this is just a tool, and I'll get back out to tabs, um, but this is just a tool with this view active user. So before you even think about doing a data file integrity check, or before you even think about doing a um, you know, uh, customization okay. or, or something like that, um, you can come in to see who's in, and then you can go ahead and um, notify them before you even start the task. So that's just a, a quick tool. We just wanted to go over how to see who is currently in the system, what they're doing in the system, and then to see if you can find any duplicate users. This is a good place to go to see who is in. Awesome. Paul? We love that logout users. That's not really what we're talking about, the view active users is, but that logout user sure saves a lot of trouble. Um, I'm going to talk about Net Documents integration. Uh, it was announced uh, and actually introduced in version nine, uh, 2019. Version 19, sorry, <laughs> we're calling version 20, version 2020, but we're still calling version 19, version 19. <laughs> it was introduced in version 19, and it is Net Documents integration with Practice Master. So you're thinking to yourself, well, why is he talking about Net Documents new integration with Practice Master in the tabs three? virtual user group meeting, and there's a very specific reason. There are two things that the Net Documents integration provides. It provides uh, a way for users in Practice Master to click a button and see the documents that they've got for that matter that they happen to be looking at in Practice Master. They want to see their Net Documents documents. And that, of course, is something that you would not care about in the Tabs virtual user group meeting unless you also happen to have Practice Master, and then you can come to our virtual user group meeting in about 40 minutes learn about that, the Net Documents integration with Practice Master. But the other thing that the Net Documents integration with Practice Master affords us is the ability that when a, a new matter or client is added 
or if a client should change their name or a matter should change its description, those things are automatically and instantly pushed up to net documents. So if you're familiar with the architecture of tabs and Practice Master, you know that they share files, among them the client file. So if you have tabs and you don't have Practice Master, but you do have net documents and you're getting tired of adding a matter to tabs and then having to turn around and go add the same matter into net documents, which can be kind of convoluted because you have to go in through the back door, the, through the admin panel, and, and add this matter and this client there. Uh, this may help you because if you get one Practice Master user, not that you're going to use Practice Master, but that you're going to use that one user to set up the integration, then once that integration has been set up, every time you add a client or a matter in tabs, it will instantly and automatically be in Net Documents. Even though you're not using Practice Master, you are in this example using Practice Master to make that happen. And as I said, also when you uh, when you have uh, a client that changes name or a matter description that gets changed, those changes are also pushed up. So I am going to do that thing we don't do much of in the Tabs Virtual User Group meeting, and I'm just going to go into Practice Master to talk very quickly about how you would set that up. Paul, uh, before you set it up, mm -hmm. um, a lot of our users have a PM Basic license um, included free with Tabs. Mm -hmm. But I am understanding, and you can correct you me if I'm correct. wrong, that the basic does not it have does this not. functionality. Yes. So right? if you're thinking, oh, I don't need to buy one, I can use the basic. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the basic does not have this functionality. You do, thanks, Mary Jo, you do need to be able to have a full running copy of Practice Master. And you don't really ever use it. You go into it, you set this up, and you forget it. Okay. So what you do, I'm going to go to the quick launch. I'm going to go to the search actions bar, and I'm going to type NETD to get the net documents integration. And I'm just going to explain to you that what you do to make this happen is you go to the firm configuration. You do not need to do the user access configuration because no users will be accessing uh, net documents from Practice Master. You are actually setting up the firm configuration so that it is uh, hooked into into Net Documents and knows how to make that connection and is authenticated. You're going to specify a username and a password, an admin user name and an admin password into Net Documents. And when you do so, you also say that you probably want to use separate client and matter fields. Uh, it, it, most people that have Net Documents are mimicking their client uh, and matter structure, but they're having a separate field. But you could also have them combined. So in Net Documents, maybe you refer to a client and a matter the kind of the same way you do in tabs. You pick them both at the same time. Uh, but most Net Documents implementations are set up kind of like the World Docs integrations that we've been working with for so long, where you've got a separate field. So you go ahead and you tell it that. You tell it how to get to it. That's what this is. You set up the repository, and you allow the authentication, you put in the username and the password, you tell it how you want the client matter number to be represented in that document. Are they two separate fields or is it one? Um, and uh, regardless of what you choose, what field is it that identifies the client and the matter? Usually client and matter, okay? Not, not rocket science here. And then you sync. So the very first time you set this up, we are under the assumption that you have some clients and matters already in there. So you do the sync now, and really, literally, in about 30 seconds, it pushes all those clients and matters that already exist over to Net Documents. Now, you can run the sync now whenever you want. So if you've already been syncing um, and you find that something went wrong and one matter didn't make it over there, you can always resync. It's not going to wipe out and then all the documents that you have in there and then reestablish blank areas to put them. It's just going to resync the tables and make sure that it's got the right clients and the right matters in there. Um, and that's really it. Once you've done that and gotten out of Practice Master, probably for good because you don't do anything in Practice Master in this particular example, or maybe you do. And maybe you do want to use the Net Documents integration in Practice Master. But nonetheless, you get out of there 
And now, whenever any of those things happen, you add a new client, you add a new matter for an existing client, you change a client's name, or you change a matter description, those things just automatically push up to, up to net documents. So it's one of those things that's kind of set it and forget it, at least from a tabs perspective. You get it set up. Uh, if you are not currently using Practice Master, you buy that full license of Practice Master, just one. You set it up so that the firm access is set so that it knows how to get to that, they call them repositories, and uh, it knows where the client and matter fields are, and then you leave it alone. You set it and you forget it, and then every matter that you add goes into net documents automatically. And that's it. That's it for today. Next month we're going to be talking about text macros. Mary Jo is going to take that topic. And I'm going to talk about the pre-update statements report, something we discovered the other day that we have never, ever talked about in the tabs of virtual user group meeting. So join us next month for those topics. And, of course, we all know that uh, it just wouldn't be a live uh, event, one of our VUGs or our webinar series, The Coffee Pot, if I didn't take you to attorneycomputersystems.com. Notice the emphasis on the last S in the word systems very important. And if you hover over or click on the videos link, I'm going to click on it, but you'll notice if you hover over it, you get the short list. And if you click on it, you get a bigger, longer list. You get taken to a page. You will see all of our video titles, and we have six of them. Four of them are live events. You will see them at the top. Of course, you know about our virtual user group meetings because you're in one now. We have a tabs, a practice master, and a world docs virtual user group meetings. They meet at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 3 o'clock on the same day, uh, usually the last Monday of the month. Uh, and we have our coffee pot webinars. These are all live events. Uh, the coffee pot webinars are, are just where I invite somebody in from a company that has a product or a service that enhances the value of one of our core products of tabs, practice master, World Docs, Net Documents, or Cosmo Lex. And I ask them in to show us their product, talk about their company, talk about the pricing, answer questions, uh, things like that. And then we also have two pre recorded video titles. We have Mary Jo's eBytes video series, where she records three a month one on Tabs, one on Practice Master, one on World Docs. And these are little. Mm, two or three minute videos where we take something really cool that we can know we know we can explain pretty quickly and we record a video about it. Um, for those things that take a little bit longer, we have the Paul and Mary Jo show where either I or Mary Jo will take a topic that's broader and we will spend 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes going into the very deep recesses of everything there is to know about that. So bigger topics, broader topics, things that take a little bit longer to explain. Uh, I'm going to go into the more info for one of the VUGs. I'll go into this one. And you'll see that uh, here we have the actual title. Um, we have a description of what that particular title is. And then since it's a live event, we have registration information. So we'll have the, 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 the date, uh, the title, uh, the description, and then we have four fields that you fill out and you register. That's all there is to it. And then as you scroll down, you will find the recorded versions of every one of these live events that we've ever done. So if we were to go actually to the very bottom of this page, we'll see that this is page 1 of 26, and there's about five videos on a page. So we got a lot of videos. we got a lot of bugs. we got a lot of Paul and Mary Joe shows. We have a lot, lot, lot of e-bytes. We have somewhere between 800 and 900 videos on our site, all dealing with tabs, practice master, world docs, Net documents and Cosmolex. So it's a place to go. It's a place to go to see this sort of thing. They are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and they are absolutely free. You can also, at the top, if you're not a browser, you can simply go to the top here and click on this magnifying glass and get to the point where you've got a little box to type in and uh, type a word for whatever it is that you're looking for, and you'll find a list of videos that have that word in the description or the title. That's it for today. Everybody have a good rest of the day, rest of the week, rest of the month, and we will see you in November. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.